Hi friends and welcome back to dig number eight into the book of Exodus. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this. Um, I just pray that as you hear the words come off the page, that they would just be alive and you'd understand them and it would make sense. Um, and that those around you would be able to have rich, rich discussion um, about what you're gonna talk about today. Um, in today's story, there are, what's important to know is that these amazing, powerful plagues that the God of Israel, the God that we serve today, Jesus' Father, <laughs> that God, right? Um, he is demonstrating his power by overcoming all of the gods, the fake gods of the Egyptians. So, for instance, today there's three important plagues that happen. And one of those plagues is the killing of all the livestock which is really sad livestock so you know the cows and the goats and and everything that produces meat and milk and nutrients for the egyptians and the israelites um, are destroyed and, and the reason god does that is because there is this god called a peace or haap that was the egyptian god of the bull and they would use a real bull to represent the god um, of the israelites and, and that God is not a real God, it's a dead God. And so God used these plagues to show the Israelites over and over again that our God is the one true God and so powerful and nothing, nothing, not anyone compares to the God of Israel. So as you um, read today, as you fill in some blanks, as you meet somebody um, from our kids group today and pray for them and say hi to them uh, through the screen, I pray that, um, you would understand how powerful our God is um, and that you would fall in love with Jesus more and more each day and long to serve Jesus no matter what. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 2. Proverbs 21 2. A person may think their own ways are right but the Lord weighs the heart. Proverbs 21 2. A person may think their own ways a camera. What's your name? Henry. Henry. And how old are you, Henry? Jesus. Are you two? Yeah. Yes, and we were singing a song just now about Jesus. What was that song? How does it go? Does it go? Jesus loves me. This I know. For the I need to make more tells me so. Snake. Oh, okay. You having fun making some snake bubbles? Very nice job making the bubbles. Do you want to say hi to the camera? Hi. Bye. Hey. Can you say bye to the camera? Wave. Bye. Say bye, Henry. Bye. <laughs> okay, if you could get out your materials and read along with me, feel free to pause at any time so you can write down any words that go in the blanks as we read Exodus chapter 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses, donkeys, and camels, and on your cattle, sheep, and goats, but the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. The Lord said a time and said, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. And the next day the Lord did it. All the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Pharaoh investigated and found that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died, yet his heart was unyielding, and he would not let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. 
It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt, and festering boils will break out on people and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air, and festering boils broke out on people and animals. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils that were on them and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh, and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go, so that they may worship me. Or this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people, so you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people, and will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt from the day it was founded till now. Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter, because the hail will fall on every person and animal that has not been brought in and is still out in the field, and they will die. Those officials of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord hurried to bring their slaves and their livestock inside. But those who ignored the word of the Lord left their slaves and livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky so that hail will fall all over Egypt, on people and animals, and on everything growing in the fields of Egypt. When Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning flashed down to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell and lightning flashed back and forth. It was the worst storm in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Throughout Egypt, hail struck everything in the fields, both people and animals. It beat down everything growing in the fields and stripped every tree. The only place it did not hail was the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron, this time I have sinned, he said to them. The Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord, for we have had enough thunder and hail. I will let you go. You don't have to stay any longer. Moses replied, When I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands in prayer to the Lord. The thunder will stop, and there will be no more hail, so you may know that the earth is the Lord's, but I know that you and your officials still do not fear the Lord God. The flax and barley were destroyed since the barley had headed, and the flax was in bloom. The wheat and spelt, however, were not destroyed because they ripened later. Then Moses left Pharaoh and went out of the city. He spread out his hands toward the Lord. The thunder and hail stopped, and the rain no longer poured down on the land. When Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and thunder had stopped, he sinned again. He and his officials hardened their hearts. So Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not let the Israelites go, just as the Lord had said through Moses. Well, hello, and welcome to our final um, part of today's lesson for October 25th, 2020, uh, ending our dig site number eight. Um, I'm ho hopeful that you've enjoyed the journey of Exodus so far, and just love being a part of this journey with you. Uh, I love digging into God's word, especially in the rich stories and history of God's people and finding out, wow, what a cool part to be a part of that um, history. Even though uh, we're not Jewish by descent, God sends his son Jesus to make that happen very soon. And it's important for us to know uh, why God had that plan to begin with. So Today, just remember that God has power over animals and weather. We know that. We talked about that last week. God's power how it bubbles over um, and makes everything happen, makes everything move. And that God has a purpose for everything that he does. I know sometimes it's hard to imagine that that was God's plan to begin with, but really 
you have to trust and know that that is what God's plan is, whether it's um, to have your mom and dad um, in your life, or maybe they're not in your, they're not together anymore. You know, God has a plan and it's his plan is always the right plan. Uh, today, we, we really talked about what sin is and just to be sure that you know what sin is too. Sin is whenever we disobey God. When, when, when we sin or we do something um, that God says not to do, or we don't do what God says to do, that is wrong. That that's sin, and we need to be able to ask for forgiveness and be redeemed by God. And so, you know, the people of God in this story do that over and over and over again. And so do we as Christians. We ask and need forgiveness every day some interesting things that are talked about today for sure would be the boils and i have a picture up here this image of a man with boils on his face it's kind of gross they're infected lumps under the skin that's super painful so the people of god the israelites um, were infected with this plague of boils uh, when the bible mentions soot it's just the, the dark powder and the substance that um, happens after you have a campfire or if you have a fire pit where you're burning wood the ashes that are left in the furnace or the chimney or the fireplace, that's called soot. And there's a picture of some soot on his hands. And then finally, some discussion questions from today's reading. Um, the first one is, instead of wiping out Egypt and everyone in it, the Lord raised up Pharaoh to show God's power. I wonder why this was God's plan. Like, I wonder why God chose to do that instead of take everybody out. What do you think God's purpose was in that? Maybe you're journaling some answers down or you have somebody to talk to and you can pause it at any time and answer these questions together. Or you can just chat with me right now as we continue on. The second question is, what three plagues did the Lord send in today's reading? One of those three plagues that were done today. If you're not sure, I want you to go back and read or look in your notes that you underlined and wrote words down. You'll be able to see what those three are. And the final question is, you know, people think that their own ways are the right ones. I know that I like to be right. I've shared that with you many times before. But what does the Lord say in Proverbs 21, 2, in our Bible verse, our memory verse today? What does the Lord say about what's right and how he knows that we know what's right? Let's pray. I just ask you to shake out your praying hands. Three, two, one. Father God. Again, so grateful for the opportunity to dig into your word today. I pray that we would know your power. Um, and as we recognize that we sin because we're not doing what you've asked us to do or we're not doing what you said not to do, God, I pray that you would just help us to know that you're right there and a gracious God and will forgive us. And it will cause us to want to do the right thing over and over again. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. See you next time.